And so when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and she saw, she saw with her eyes, yes, yeah, saw, that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, yeah, okay, and the tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. And that's where we need to get so mad at Adam. We get the need to get so mad at Adam. And the eyes of them were both open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves covering. So go back there, and everybody say with me, and they were naked. naked. What did Satan do? He exposed them. He exposed them. Sin will expose you. Sin will expose you. And Satan exposed them, and they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves, and they knew they were naked, and now they knew they were exposed and made themselves coverings. So now let's go to uh, 1 John. Do not love the world or the things in the world, for any, if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. That, that's an interesting statement there. Do not love the world. For all that is in the world, and here we go, the lust of the flesh... The lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. That's an interesting thing. And he says, this world is passing away in the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. So the first thing you did when the will of God was, you must be born again. Amen. Jesus said you must be born again. That's the will of God. God's will is that no man perish. So the first thing you should do, and I pray right now, every day I pray for your families, and I pray that every family, in you, every family member in your family will come to Jesus Christ in the born-again experience. You must be born again. That's the will of God. That's the perfect will of God. It starts right there. But how many know that just because you're born again doesn't mean the enemy won't mess with you? It doesn't mean life won't mess with you. It doesn't mean your flesh won't mess with you. Say with me, I can't trust my flesh. You cannot trust your flesh. You know you can't trust the devil. So why would you let those two ever meet? So here we see in the garden, it was the temptation of Adam and Eve. So here we have the temptation of the first Adam. In Matthew 4, 1 through 11, we have the temptation of Christ, who is the second Adam. In 1 Corinthians 15, 45, it says, So it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being, and the last man, Adam, became a life-giving spirit. So what is interesting is we have God and he comes down and he talks directly to the serpent. And he curses the serpent. He says, you're going to crawl on your belly all the days of your life. Some theologians say that, that walk, he must have walked at some time. But that was the curse. But then he makes a promise of a redeemer to come. And then he deals with Adam and Eve. Now what's interesting is Satan comes and he tempts the first Adam. And now Jesus Christ has come, and he is the second Adam. And what's interesting is your Bible says, and the Spirit led him into the wilderness. Say it was the Spirit. It was the Spirit. It, was the Spirit. it wasn't the devil that led him into the wilderness. I'm stunned at Christians that say, yes, the devil took him into the wilderness. No, the devil did not take him into the wilderness. And praise God, I'm telling you, you need to appreciate this, that, that God let Jesus do this so you didn't have to. And I'm not saying that you won't deal with the devil, but God will never lead you into a place to be tempted by Satan. Amen. The Bible says you can't be tempted of God. He can't touch evil. He won't. God will not bring evil to you. He won't touch evil. Amen. But something very important is happening here in the spirit. God told Satan, uh, there's going to be a Redeemer come. And so now the Redeemer has come. Christ has come. And now he is directly talking to the devil in the wilderness. So just as God spoke to the devil in the garden, God is now speaking to the devil in the wilderness. And I have realized as I've studied this that God has unfinished business with the devil. God doesn't leave things open-ended. God is a finisher. God is a finisher. Say with me, God is a finisher. If God started it, he will finish it. And I praise God for this, that if it was the Spirit that led him into the wilderness, it was the Holy Spirit that will lead him out of the wilderness in victory. 
If you are in the wilderness, I want to tell you that is not God's place for you to stand and camp and live there. It is by, designed by God to take you back out of that wilderness and to get out of the wilderness experience. But next week, I'm going to talk to you about the power and what God has in the wilderness. He has angels in the wilderness, whether you believe it or not. So we are created in the image and likeness of God. Our consultant is God. My image consultant is God. My image consultant is His Word. Amen. If you want to have the image of God, you're going to find it in His Word. Amen. So we're created in the image and likeness of God. God is our image consultant, and God has given us image and likeness to have dominion. Do you know God wants you to have dominion? I'm amazed at the believers who don't believe that, but that is God's desire for you to have dominion in your life. So the, in Hebrew, the word for image is character. In Hebrew, the word for image is character. And we've learned in this series that A is a character of the alphabet, right? Yeah. An A is always an A. Yeah. A one is a character. A one is always a one. You take it to Las Vegas, a one is still a one. You take an A to Las Vegas, it is still an A. So God said, I am God, I change not. My character is so firm and so established, I don't let circumstances change who I am. I'm God Almighty, I don't have to change. What God is saying is, if there's change needed, I'll make the change appropriately. So when we needed redemption and we needed a change, God said, I will send my son to redeem you. Amen. Change was needed and God said, I'll deal with it. God, I am God of character. So here Satan is in the wilderness. He wants to steal God's character. He wants to steal his image and he wants all the power that God has. So when Jesus came up out of the water, the, the announcement to the whole world was, this is my beloved son. In whom I'm well pleased. And then Christ now who is the second Adam. And now you're going to restore all things that the first Adam lost. Do you know that's why came, Christ came? He said, I've come to restore all things. Everybody say all things. All so God is saying, I've got unfinished with a bit, the business with the devil. What is God saying here? Jesus, you have to pass the test that Adam failed. Jesus, somebody has to pass this test. Somebody has to live a perfect life. Somebody has to be tempted and overcome temptation and fulfill the law of Moses and live a perfect life so that he can become a redemption sacrifice with holy and sinless blood. Somebody's got to come and face the devil. Amen. Somebody's got to come and face the devil. I praise God. He has faced the devil for me. And he faced him down because he had unfinished business with him. Because God got very upset. How many of you are protective over your children? If you didn't raise your hands, I'll pray for you. <laughs> Do you know God's protective over you? Do you know God's protective over you? That needs to be hallelujah. But if you don't agree with me, I'll just, I'll just praise God. I thank God for that. So God says somebody's got somebody's to pass the test Adam, Adam failed. So see, the, ever since Adam failed, the universe wanted to know. The, all the angels of heaven wanted to know. All the demons of hell wanted to know. Is there anybody that can stand up to the tempter? Is there anybody that can stand up to the devil? Because right now we don't see it happening. In all the time from Adam to Jesus, no man was able to stand up to the tempter. And so the universe and the angels all wondered, is there anyone? In fact, the Bible says, God said, I sought for a man and I could find no one, so I say it came myself. Right. So that is why God had to come. So everybody's wondering, can anybody stand up to the devil? So will Jesus, who is the image and likeness of God, will he fulfill? Will he fulfill the word of God? And Jesus' character was on trial, and I'm going to tell you, if you live this life long enough, there will be a time your character will be on trial. See, here's the problem. Adam was made of flesh, bone, and blood. And in that, he lost the image and likeness of God through temptation. Everybody say temptation. temptation. That's a problem. Adam wasn't just a spirit. He was flesh and bone and blood. So now it's going to require flesh and bone and blood to bring redemption. Amen. Oh my goodness, we are, humanity is in a problem, we're in a pickle, and there is no way out. Adam has fallen, what is God going to do? See, the temptation of Christ was God picking up exactly where it was left off in the garden by Adam. Is God saying, you... 
tempted my son. And you took him down. And God said, I'm going to finish that. I've got unfinished business with you, devil. And I'm here to tell you God has unfinished business in your life. You have children you're waiting to see back, come back to God, but God's not finished. You have family members you're waiting to see come to Christ. God's not finished. Say, God's not finished. God's not finished. What he starts, he will finish. And I want to just reassure you that today. God's not finished. It's going to take a man. It's going to take flesh and bone and blood to redeem man. The problem is a spirit cannot redeem man. God could not redeem man from heaven. A lot of people think he could, but I'm going to tell you flat out he couldn't. And I'm going to tell you why, because the Apostle Paul clearly tells us in Hebrews, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission or redemption from sin. Right. Everybody say, without the shedding of blood. Shedding of blood. I got, I'm going to let you on a secret. Spirits don't have blood. Right. No. I'm going to let you in on a secret on this side. Spirits don't have blood. Yeah. God needed a man with flesh and bone and blood to come to bring redemption. Because that was, that was what God required. Right. So a man had to come. But he had to be tempted and tested and tried in all manner to see if he could withstand the tempter. So a spirit cannot redeem you. It had to be flesh, bone, and blood. So to be legal on the earth, you have to have a body. That's a requirement. That's why Satan and his demons are not legal on the earth. They are not legal here. They are illegal. He's an illegal cherub. He's unemployed. He's illegal. And he's looking for somebody to inhabit. The only way that he can operate in the earth is in and through people. If you can't find people, he'll, oh, okay, I'll use Bible on you. He'll, thry, he'll use pigs. I can tell you for a fact, I have seen dogs that I knew were possessed. You ever met a mean, nasty, angry dog? No, I'm, I'm serious. I have met dogs. that There's something wrong with that dog. I know I have met some cats. that. Oh my, they, my goodness. I couldn't believe the hissing and what was going on with that. I trapped a cat accidentally one time, and it, it took me, the Holy Spirit, and the five angels to get rid of that cat. It was so, so scary. I thought I was dealing with Beelzebub himself. Oh, my goodness. Next time I have a cat trapped, I'll call the animal control. I, I can't. It was unbelievable. So God had to send a man. It had to be a man that brought redemption to mankind. So you need to understand something. Satan's question was, if thou be the Son of God. If thou be the Son of God. Well, how, there are four types of the sons of God. Do you know that? And you will not understand. If you don't understand this, you will not understand that question. If thou be the Son of God. So I, I need to explain to you and bring to you from the Word of God. Not from Pastor Steve. This isn't theory. This is the revelation of God's Word. So, I'm just going to read it to you, okay? I remember I told a guy one time that uh, Adam was a son of God, and he's like, what? <laughs> said, I've never heard that. So, let me read Luke. Anybody re know Luke, who Luke was in the Bible? Can I read the Apostle Luke? Probably one of the most educated of all the apostles. Which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. There you go. Adam was the son of God. Hmm, but I'm not through. God has some more sons. When God told Pharaoh, go tell Moses to go tell Pharaoh, you let my children go. And if you don't let my children go, my firstborn son Israel, he said, I'll take your firstborn son. Exodus 4 and 22, and thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, so thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son. Even my firstborn. Ah. Ah. Hmm. If thou be the Son of God. <laughs> now you're starting to maybe get a spiritual understanding. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. I've just given you three sons of God types of sons, haven't I? From Scripture, not from theory. I need you to understand that the importance of this question is based in this. And in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son made of a woman under the law to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption as sons. Ah, oh, okay. 
And don't let that word adoption bother you, because the adoption in God is as real as the blood son. In fact, the Apostle Paul, when he's explaining this, he says, do you, do you remember Moses? When Pharaoh's daughter adopted him and brought him up as her own son with every right and privilege of the palace of Egypt. When you were adopted by God in the born again experience, you are heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ with every right, every privilege that heaven have forged Jesus Christ and all these other sons. You have the same rights, praise God. Don't think your adoption is less. And I'm going to shock you with this. Joseph adopted Jesus to make Jesus the line of Judah. Jesus was the line of the tribe of Judah through adoption by Joseph, who was of the house of Judah. My God, my God, my God. I, I'm, oh, I'm telling you, I'm giving you truth right there. Your adoption is as real as anything there is. So don't think your adoption is less. Jesus was adopted. He knows what it's like to be adopted. Read your Jewish history. So let's talk, let's, let's break this down. Adam was God's first created son. Did God create Adam? Israel was God's first spiritual son. God's first covenant son. Jesus is God's only begotten son. And we are now New Testament believers. We are adopted as sons of God. And we are sons through adoption. Now, if thou be the son of God, which son are you? That was not just a trite little question. Not like, he doesn't know who he is. See, most people don't know God has four types of sons. And now that we've got to understand, now this brings a lot of relevance to this question. So why is, the, why is that the first question Satan asked the Lord? If thou be the Son of God, do you know who you are? Are you the same as the adopted sons? Are you the same as the created son? Are you the same as the firstborn? Who are you? And do you, I'm going to ask you today, do you know who you are in Christ Jesus? Amen. Do you know your sonship and the establishment that God has given you as a son and a daughter of the Most High God? And that is as legal and real as Jesus Christ who is the Son of God through the begotten experience. Because when you were born again, you were born what? Of the Spirit. How was Mary impregnated? Of the Spirit. What? Spirit. You just fell into my trap. You got born again by the Spirit. Jesus got in, Mary got impregnated by the Spirit. It is the Spirit of God that has brought you into sonship. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> if thou be the Son of God. Now you understand that question. What son are you? Do you know who you really are? Are you the first son, the second son, the third? Who are you? And it's not a stupid question, it's insidious. It's sneaky and it's secretly dangerous and harmful. And he's really trying to corrupt, corrupt and entrap the Lord Jesus Christ. He's looking for a wrong confession. One of the greatest things we can do to stop the devil in our lives is stop wrong confession. Hallelujah. Quit telling the devil who you are not. Quit giving the devil information about who you are. And I'm going to shock you with this, but all of the sons of God, every category, has one thing in common with Satan. He hates every one of them. He hates every son of God. Okay, let's go through history. Did Satan hate Adam and Eve? He just said, oh man. Did Satan hate... Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Yep. Yes. Does Satan hate the Jewish people on the earth today? Yes. One of the things that, that, that I, I, I guess I studied this years ago was Mark Twain. They asked Mark Twain, did he believe in the Bible? And he said, absolutely. And they're like, well, why would a man of your character and stature even need to read the Bible? Why would you even care what the Bible says? And they said, you really believe in the Bible? He said, I absolutely believe in the Bible. And they said, why do you believe in the Bible? He said, there's no people on earth that have been persecuted like the Jewish people and have been driven almost into absolute extinction and persecution and it never stops and it never ends and they're still alive on the earth and they're still here and they succeed everywhere they go. He said, God must be real in relation to the way he promised Abraham that he would keep his people alive. There's no way the Jewish people should even be alive on the earth. Ever heard of a little guy named Adolf Hitler? It wasn't just Hitler. It was people all over Europe that tried to get rid of the Jews. Did, did Satan hate Jesus? 
So I, I, I don't want to burst your bubble, but he don't like you either. <laughs> and you know why he hates you? Because you and I took his place. Amen. You and I took his place. And that's why he hates us. If y'all be the son of God. You never need to get in an argument with the devil about your identity in Christ. Never have to argue with him. Jesus, he, the enemy he knows he has power and authority. He said, I can't, I'm going to try to tempt him. To get to use his power and authority to do something that is about the flesh. You know, when you're hungry, one of the things that tempts us to do is turn something that is not into something that is what we desire. That's the problem. The first temptation was a temptation of the flesh. Turn this, these rocks, these stones into bread. And the temptation of that is in power is turning something that is not into something that is. And Satan will do that to us all the time. Have you ever turned something that is not into something that is? It wasn't about the stones, it was about the hunger. See, when the flesh is hungry and it has power, it will use its power to get the thing it wants. I know, no, you don't, I know you don't believe me. You ever heard Samson? <laughs> David? King Saul? Paul? The Apostle Paul? The Apostle Paul wanted to kill Christians and the Sanhedrin gave him the power and the authority to go kill Christians. That's just what he wanted. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, it's not from the Father. So we're right back here in the garden here. Satan and God squaring off. Satan and God squaring off. I wonder if the second Adam's going to make it through this. Anybody want to take a bet? I wonder if the second Adam, because all of creation is watching this. All of heaven, and I guarantee you, all of hell is watching this episode right here. I guarantee you, all the angels are in heaven looking like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. We know where Lucifer failed. Is this going to be a failure too? Oh, don't kid yourself. All the universe was watching this. So we're right back in the garden. Oh my goodness. Adam and Eve, what are you hungry for? You have the power to partake of it. If you be the Son of God. Do you, do you have the power to turn these bread? Do you, have the bre do you have the power to fulfill the desires of the flesh? Jesus was hungry by this point at 40 days, okay? Hell wanted to know if you're the Son of God. Same thing in the garden. Indeed, has God said? You see, when he said, to turn these breads into stone, Jesus submits his power and dominion and authority to the word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth. And what is Jesus telling us here? The word of God is more important than the flesh we desire. Amen. And here's what you need to write down. Jesus submits God, to God's word, not Satan's word. Adam and Eve submitted to Satan's word. That's, right. That's what they did. Yeah. Is that simple? Jesus said, no, I, I, I'm not following in that. I'm not submitting to your words, devil. Amen. See, Adam and Eve submitted and took more authority and took more concern of what Satan had said than what God had said. Right. <laughs> that was the issue. They submitted to the word and put Satan's word above God's word. Do you realize the folly here of Satan? He's tempting the word of God. Everybody say, the word of God. With lies. He's tempting the word of God with lies. He's tempting Stephen with lies. Jesus said it this way. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And you're tempting me with lies? No way! You're tempting me with lies? No way! Amen. My goodness! The enemy didn't understand what's happening here. I'm going to get him. I got that first Adam, the second Adam. I'm going to get him too. I'm going to be a little more sticky, sneakier. I'm, I'm a little more tricky. I don't got no woman to deal with. I shouldn't have said that. Anyway, anyway he said, I'm, I'm going to deceive him too. And he's trying to deceive. And the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. And that, that is all truth. See, when you have the truth of God in you, you a lie can't stand before you. When you have the truth of God in you, a lie cannot stand before you. Hallelujah. 
So the enemy questions the word. He knows Jesus is tired. Have you ever found out that the enemy comes against you when you're tired? Have you ever been sick and tired and have this, this is almost like the devil shows up? Have you ever been worn out? Have you ever noticed the attacks of the enemy come in the night and not in the morning? Wow. He'll always tempt you with something you already are. Turn these loaves into bread. I am the bread of life. I don't need bread. My will is to and meat is to do the will of my Father. Jesus doesn't get into an argument about which son I am. I am the son of God. Is you, are you the son of God? He goes right through that. And he doesn't argue with the devil. I'm going to tell you right now, brothers and sisters, don't argue with the devil. Jesus didn't even address the lie to the question, if thou be the son of God. He went straight to the word of God. It is written. It is written. So Jesus said, you're trying to tempt me with bread? I am what I'm hungry for. That's what I meant to say. I am. Say, I am, I am. What, I'm hungry for. what I'm hungry for. And that's what Jesus told the devil. Amen. Turn these into bread. I, I, I'm already bread. I am what I'm hungry for. My goodness. And Jesus does not ask, deny the aspect of bread. We know that. He's hungry. We know the angels came and ministered, and that's next Sunday. And I, I, I gonna, you don't, need to, don't miss that one. He's saying the word of God is more valuable than bread. The Word of God is more valuable than your lunch today. I, I just, I'll just bring it home. The Word of God is more valuable than your lunch today. The Word of God will do more for you than your lunch will do at 1230. Jesus is saying, I'm not for sale. I have too much character for that. See, God's image and character never changes. God's image and character. In the Hebrew, the word image is character. And the devil didn't understand that. I can't attack his character because there's no character flaws. There's no character issues. One is one, A is A, and Jesus Christ is God. There's nothing I can do here. I didn't know he knew the word like this. So, in the situation of trials, tests, and temptation... It's important that we know the Word. Yes. One of the things that Satan ran into that he did not understand was vision. Luke tells us in the first chapter of Luke that the process of going to the cross for Jesus Christ was passion. For you, and you, and you, and you. Christ's passion for you was bigger than his hunger for bread. Christ's vision for humanity was bigger than his hunger for bread. You need to understand Joseph's vision of what God gave him in his dream. His dream was bigger than Potiphar's wife. See, when you have a dream and a vision that is bigger than any temptation, Satan can't touch it. What's your dream and your vision today? Is it big enough to the degree that you will absolutely forego everything that world and the enemy offers to say, my dream and my vision is bigger than temptation? You get a dream and a vision bigger than temptation, I'm going to tell you what, the devil's in trouble. Amen. My God, my God, my God, do you understand what I'm telling you? When your dream and vision is untouchable by the devil, guess what? Temptation loses its power. So my question to you, do you have dream or a vision? And I'm going to prove it to you by Scripture. Because here's what, the, here's what the literal Hebrew says. Without vision, people cast off restraint. That's the Hebrew. Without vision, people cast off. Without vision, you're open to temptation. Without vision, you're open to be tested and tried. But vision says, no, I have a vision. I have a dream from God. And I will not sell myself out to see this vision dry. To see this dream die. The reason Joseph couldn't be tempted was he had a dream and a vision bigger than that situation. He had a dream and a vision bigger than temptation. So the first temptation Jesus faced was the lust of the flesh. And I told you that Satan will always offer you what you have, what you already have, or what you already are. And we're going to look at it in these three temptations of Christ. Turn these stones into bread. I am the bread of life. I already am bread. I don't need to turn those into bread. I am the living bread. 
The second the command, the temptation Jesus faced was the lust of the eyes. And by the way, whether you read Ma Matthew or Luke, they have them in one of the se se sequences, a little bit different, so I'm going with Luke. The lust of the eyes is the second temptation Jesus faced. In this case, it was offered the unfettered access to kingdoms, wealth, riches. Satan said, I'll give you all the kingdoms of this world. He doesn't say the kingdoms of this earth. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. God owns the earth. The systems of this world, we always say the world system, don't you ever, have you ever heard that saying, the, the, this world system's gone mad, this world system's gone crazy? The world system is a system of the government of man, and the insanity of the systems of government of man. And just look around, it's insane. But the earth is God's. And so Satan says, I'll give you all the kingdoms of this world, and he had a right to do that because Adam had given that to him. In fact, the Apostle Paul says that the prince of this world calls him that. So if you wonder why you see all this evil going on all over the world, it's the prince of the power of the air who's driving that in the kingdoms of this world. Yes. Nobody can be that stupid and insane unless they got filled with the devil. I'll give you unfettered access to kingdoms, cities, wealth, all the world's riches and beyond. He showed him all the kingdoms of this world and their glory. And he said, I will give this to you if you will fall down and worship me. And Jesus just goes to scripture on him. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only. But hold it. I read a scripture one time. He's offering him access to all the kingdoms and the cities and the wealth of the world. I read this scripture. And the seventh angel sounded and there was a great voice in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever and ever. The kingdoms of this world are already his in eternity. They're already his. He's offering something that's already his. See, once you learn the trick of the devil, it's like, yeah, I'm a little bit wiser. That's temptation. That's the enemy. You're offering something I already have, something I already have, are. If you be the son of God. How many can tell you, tell the, tell the devil, I am a son of God. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, don't worry about your adoption status because that don't mean anything to God. So he said, I'm going to offer you your own kingdoms if you just worship me. Don't you know the danger of what Jesus, if Je do you know what would have happened if Satan had got Jesus to commit to that? Do you know? If Jesus had worshipped Satan, Satan could have taken the throne in heaven. That's a fact. That was a danger here. Jesus said, I won't trade the throne of God for the throne of men. I won't trade the throne of God for the thrones of men. Oh, oh, read, I know your scripture, brothers and sisters. I know my scripture. If Jesus had worshipped Satan, it'd be all over. There would have been no redemption. Satan could have sat on the throne of God himself. You shall worship the Lord thy God and him only. Isn't that what Satan, what Jesus told Satan? So if Satan worshipped, excuse me, if Jesus worshipped Satan, he was making Satan God. You shall worship the Lord thy God only and him only shall thou worship. If Jesus worshipped Satan, it would have made Satan God. Woo, I'm telling you the truth, brothers and sisters. My God Almighty. I'm glad he didn't blow this. Oh, I'm glad it wasn't me or you there. I'm glad it wasn't my favorite TV preacher. I'm glad it wasn't the greatest saint you know. I'm glad it was Jesus. I won't train... The throne of God for the thrones of men. Wow. He said, these kingdoms are already mine. Satan forgot to read Revelation. See, he, he, he hadn't been written yet. He didn't know. <laughs> the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord. And of his Christ. <laughs> My God Almighty, Satan. Who you think you're messing with? You're you messing with the wrong marine here. The final temptation was all to have the pride of life. The devil took him to the holy city and set him on the temple and he said, jump off, show off, get people to look at you. 
become important. Have people worship and adore you. You ever watch that American Idol stuff and all that stuff on TV? Everybody wants to be a superstar. Vote for my son, Johnny. Everybody wants their moment of fame. He's asking Jesus, you want all of Israel to bow at your feet and worship you? Go down into Jerusalem. I'm going to set you on the temple. The very highest part of the temple. And he said, do it in public and let everybody show everybody your God. And they'll fall down and they'll worship you. They'll adore you. They'll revere you. Get people to look at you with power and fame. It's amazing to me. All the men, you know all the miracles and the people Jesus healed, he said, I don't want you to tell nobody. I don't want you to tell nobody. Please don't. What was Jesus doing? Humility. Humility. Jesus never heard what healed one person said. Now go tell everybody in Israel, especially Caiaphas and the whole priesthood and all the Sanhedrin, go tell them what I did. Go tell them. What. Jesus never did that. And Satan's saying, show off. Show them who you are. Get people to worship you on a human act. And if it's at a human act, they'll only love you at a human level. Show off, Jesus, if you are the Son of God. Throw yourself down. Then he misquotes Psalms 91. Think Jesus knew Psalms 91? Anybody think Jesus knew Psalm 91? <laughs> Liar. <laughs> Liar. Show off so people will follow you. They'll worship you if you become a superhero to them. Show off. Jesus didn't have to do that. Let me give you scripture for that. Therefore God hath highly exalted him and given him the name above every name. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. Those in heaven. Those in the earth. And those under, ooh, the devil going to be bowing too. And every demon of hell is going to be bowing too one day. My God, he, he's offering Jesus something he already has. All praise, honor, and glory and worship has been given by God the Father to Jesus. He's trying to get Jesus to sell out. For a cheap imitation of true worship. The acclaim of man, but not the worship of God. Let's see. Therefore God has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. Boy, the, I don't think the devil can one-up this one. <laughs> that at that name every knee should bow. I got news for you. You don't want to bow, one day you're going to. One day you're going to. If you don't know how to bow, go to Catholic Church and learn how to bow on all kneelers. Learn how to bow, because one day you're going to bow. And I don't care who you think you are, one day it's God. No, one day you will bow. And one day the devil will bow, and every one of his demons will bow. And Jesus said, I'm going to sell myself up for this, a cheap imitation of worship. He don't need to show off. <laughs> At that name of Jesus, every knee should bow, and those in heaven, everybody in heaven, and those on the earth, and those under the earth. And that every, ooh, this ooh says, this. do you know one day Satan is going to confess Jesus Christ is Lord? I'm going to read it to you. One day Satan is going to confess Jesus Christ Hallelujah. is Hallelujah. Lord. Because Jesus didn't falter here in this situation. Because if he had, it would have been one day everybody would have to confess Satan is Lord. Jesus wasn't going to give the throne away. But God needed to put him in a situation. I'm going to test you and tempt you to see. Because you're flesh and blood. You're flesh and blood and bone. And you have feelings and you hurt and you get tired and you get sleepy. Just like man. Just like Adam did. And where Adam failed, I need to see if one man can succeed. Oh yes, one day the devil will bow too. Don't <laughs> read, your, read your Bible. So the pride of life, greatness and power and acclaim. My goodness, we all want that, don't we? Like Jesus, we all face the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. 
But in a very simple and easy to understand way, Jesus tells us exactly how to resist all temptation, the Word of God. Right. It's the Word of God. Every temptation that the enemy brought, Jesus went right to the Word and quoted the Word of God to him. And he didn't misquote it. So can I tell you, according to Corinthians, there's no temptation that, you, that has overtaken you except that is common to any man. There's nothing you've been through that somebody else hasn't been tempted with. And everything you've been through, there have been those that have failed. And everything you've been through, there have been some that have succeeded. But there's nobody that has succeeded in every area except one man, Jesus Christ. Yeah. The man, Jesus Christ, succeeded in every area. Hallelujah. That gives him the authority. The authority and the power. The power of the blood is he had no sin. That's the power of the blood. It was not contaminated by sin. Would you believe in their power in the blood? Yeah, because there was no sin in the blood. Amen. Jesus showed us that. The way out is the word of God. In fact, Colossians, Paul tells us, I put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image. Oh, there's that word image. The image of God. Say, I have the image of God. That means you have the character of God. That means it's possible to have the character of God. Let me see if I'm reading that right. And they put in the new man which is renewed in the knowledge after the image. I didn't put this word in there. God did. Of him that created him. Where there is neither Jew nor Greek, circumcision or uncircumcision, barbarian, scathian, bond or free. But Jesus is all in all. My question to you today, the reason temptation don't have to get you and doesn't have to mess with you, Jesus is your all in all. I don't need to be jealous of you. I don't need to be greedy. I don't need to have a bad attitude. Jesus is my all in all. That's right. <clears throat> Put on there for us the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness, and meekness, and long suffering. Just like Christ. Oh, but I told you that at the beginning here that Satan exposed Adam and Eve, didn't he? God said, I'm not done with that one. God said, I'm not done. You did this to my son. You did this to my boy. My God, how many of you are protective over your children? You need to understand how much God loves you. You did this to my son and my daughter. I'm going to finish this. God said, I have unfinished business. You messed with my son. You did this to him. Okay, I'll just read it. Colossians 2, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way by nailing it to his cross, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he showed them openly. He exposed Satan and all his demons at the cross. Amen. You expose my son Adam, I'm going to expose you. And God said, what happened in the garden? I'm not done with that. I'm going to finish it at the cross. Mm -hmm. Let me read that again. Yes. Having boiled principalities and powers. Some translations, having exposed them. You exposed Adam? I'm going to expose you. Amen. The Bible says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Yes. I, I know you don't believe this, but your God is the God of vengeance. Yes. Your God is a God of vengeance. And it's righteous, holy vengeance. And my message to you today is, if the devil's messed with you, God's not through with the situation. Amen. What about my kids? God's not through. What about my grandkids? God's not through. What about this situation with my boss? What about this situation with my work? What about this situation with my finances? God's not through. In fact, I read a scripture one time where he would come and make the devil pay back seven times. Yes. Yes. Oh, you need to know how much God loves you. You need to know how much God loves you. And if you've ever been exposed by the devil because maybe foolishness or whatever, God said, I'm not done with that. I'll come and make it right. I'll come and make it right. You messed with my son, Adam. You exposed him. Guess what? There's a day coming. And so I want to just remind you that what happened when the temptation of Christ was over? Angels showed up. 
angel showed up. But it won't surprise you, they were there all the time. They were there all the time. You have angels right now all around your life. All around your life. We're going to talk about angels next week. You don't believe in angels? Then you don't believe God's Word. But I'm going to go to God's Word. I'm not going to make this up. I'm not smart enough to make up angels. But the angels were there the whole time. Remember Satan said, as you dash your foot against a stone, the angels are already there. I'm here to tell you there's already angels there. You're going through a wilderness experience, you're not alone. Say, I have angels. I have angels. God sent them. God Say, God's not finished. God's not finished. My, God finisher. My God is a finisher. Hallelujah. My God is a finisher. The Alpha and the Omega. <laughs> the beginning and the end. The first and the last. He even tells you in his names, I'm a finisher. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And God said, if you'll put my name on your children, I'm not finished with them. I'm not finished with them. I'm going to go after them. I'll send the Holy Spirit after them. I'll seek angels after them. I'm not through. If you agree with that, say amen. amen. God bless you. We'll see you here Tuesday at 930. Go in the name of the Lord. God bless you. Hello, one and all. We have been receiving questions regarding where to send tithes and offerings. If you'd like to mail it in, you can do so at P.O. Box 2223, Sholo, Arizona, 85902. And please, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, share, and subscribe. While you're at it, like us on Facebook. Link is in the description. And follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Link is also in the description. Helps out us, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that this is a format you wish to see continue. And with that, we wish you a blessed week.